All right, home stretch. We are on the home stretch, final module. You're still with me, right? I hope so. Stick in it because we've got three final things to talk about here and they all live within these like untapped or additional opportunities for driving really valuable engagement and what we mean by that is like results we want the conversions and the meaningful actions that make any kind of facebook marketing worth our time so we're just going to go back one more time to number one which is video the first of our three final kind of ninja uh areas so We've talked about different types of video that we can you know, upload as highly produced pieces of video content that maybe we have in our bag of tricks. Maybe it's a trailer or some kind of promotional video or something that we have put together once a year. Um, if you can do that, amazing. And uh, perhaps instead it's some kind of like live as the middle video there is where Gary Vaynerchuk, my boyfriend, now one of my favorite marketers, um, he will film a live and he will also pull the audio out of it and post it as a podcast. And he'll also film a YouTube live at the same time and an Instagram live at the same time. And even a LinkedIn, live. like he repurposes the crap out of things or cross, you know, uses one, one session where he's doing a Q and a or a, a, an interview or call in show or whatever it is. So that's kind of cool. He's calling it a podcast episode and he's posting it as a, a video on Facebook with captions that he may have captioned in a third party tool like Zubtitle or uh, Vox. But if he um, is using Facebook's captioning tool, that's great too. So a couple of options there. The ace one is some kind of produced video. The third one is the very rudimentary uh, graphics into a video carousel as we created or I, I showed you earlier. You can also create that right in Canva. It'll export as a video or an MP4 file um, or as a GIF. You can create it in Jiffy. There's lots of animating apps as you've probably been targeted with or have seen. Um, all sorts of things that you can use their templates, their existing backgrounds and just add words to it and then export it and voila, you've got a video. So don't be afraid of it. Don't assume you don't have it because it does go a lot further than a still image for a number of reasons. Captures eyeballs, it's got animation and it stops the scroll and um, you know, it just tends to perform better in promoted content. Let's go back one more time to our friends at Sunshine Village as well as WeWork. Just a couple of things that I wanna point out here. Um, so if we look at, at Sunshine Village, I, we saw that they are running that one promoted post or uh, one piece of ad content that it looks like it's been running for quite some time. And I say that because the wording is outdated and it's been running since 2016, bless them. Um, but the fact that they have 705,000 fans or followers is incredible. And this is where we've hit an absolute sweet spot. It's the same as with uh, my pals from Inglewood. So I started this page in 2009, back when, you know, the Facebook was not part of my PR contract with this lovely association and organization. And I said, you guys, we got to get on this thing. And we started posting to it with zero budget and zero idea of what we we're going to do with it. And it has organically grown really, really well um, to the point where they don't have to advertise. Their organic reach is great. They post something meaningful and they'll get a ton of engagement. Okay, these are bad examples. But in the past, their content has performed really, really well without a lot of, um, you know, need to promote it. And the other sort of, I guess, um, insider trick that they have, however, is that they have a lot of member merchants, restaurants, retailers, galleries, you know, shops and boutiques that will share that content. So it's a really nice um, sort of social sharing thing happening that that hopefully, you know, you could maybe benefit from as well, especially if you're part of an association or a broader group that can, you know, raise all boats together by promoting each other's posts and cross posting, etc. Um, okay, so when we look at Sunshine one more time, um, the thing about their videos, as we mentioned, they're doing so, so well, and uh, and I just am I'm marveling at the amount of reach that they're receiving and the frequency at which they're posting them. They've created some playlists, so maybe when they're posting that video, they, they say, yes, add it to this playlist if they want, or they don't have to subcategorize their videos. Um, but on the whole, Seeing how frequently they're posting is unique because there's not, I cannot find a lot of examples right now of companies or, or uh, organizations that are still utilizing video content in Facebook because as I mentioned, so much of it has been trumped or maybe replaced by Instagram video. But 
When I scroll their page, I am desperate to go skiing. It is just incredible. And they are using all the variation and all the things that we've been talking about. And I get it. We're not all the like sexy ski hills with six inches of six feet of pow, but we have engagement. We have positive messaging. We have a clever mix of content. We have human side to it. Like they're not afraid to be themselves and to own their personality. Um, and as a result, they have just unbelievable fan support show up as a, as yourself or, you know, as much of your, as your brand values allow you to. And I promise you people will be more human in return. Nobody likes engaging with a robot. None of us feel like we like feeling like we're being sold to. And, um, you know, it's really, really cool to see that ownership piece like this guy, Mike Seward, nothing to see here. Everyone should just stay home. Like he's a fan and he, there is that, um, brand affinity or sort of ownership stake. I, this is partly my brand, like Sunshine has made it so that they set the stage, we engage in a way that makes us feel like we belong. Amen. For very little budget. I know this organization and they're like many of us in that they have a very small marketing department and very realistic budget restraints. So don't fool yourself. You saw their advertising content, but if nothing else, running one evergreen continuous page likes campaign, I'm guessing, that perhaps drives enough fans and then they're creating enough great organic content that they don't need to boost their posts as much or if at all, especially certain times of the season, because they've got this like incredible footage, uh, post types, etc. You get the idea. So we work as another one. Now this one is quite cool because they are utilizing what I would call campaigns. And most of us understand what an ad campaign is when we think about TV or billboards or radio. This is what fascinates me. If I say to you, how about that Ikea campaign? Hey, you know, the start the car or some other kind of recurring, oh, the Philly lady, she's back and she's sitting in the clouds. Remember the cream cheese gal? We get that that's a campaign and it rolls out across TV, billboards, radio, maybe some print. It's kind of just like this whole thing and it just rolls out because that's what they do. But when it comes to social campaigns, we all kind of go like, huh? how do I, what, what is that? And we're just really caught up in like our day to day, but post, 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 post. And we don't have these jump off points that we really need. The springboards every quarter, every month, even once a year that make us have something different to talk about or kind of leapfrog from. And quarterly campaigns at minimum are wonderful. Also, if you can go beyond having a campaign around International Women's Day or Christmas, back to school, Pride Week, if you're gonna do any of those things, do them well. The token Pride Week post, an avatar change to a rainbow, or the Women's Day event or post that feels after the fact, great, I'm not saying don't do them, not at all. But if you can, Choose one of those as your like significant, meaningful campaigns that you're gonna work backwards from and spend six weeks strategizing on it or dripping up to it or counting down to it. And don't forget as well that you can manufacture these campaigns too. Uh, in my PR life, um, you know, it was really neat to try and conceive of a, of a sideline uh, kind of clever campaign for that chewing gum company or that tea shop that was opening because no media is going to write about the new flavor of Nest Tea. Like go buy an ad as I used to feel like in the newsroom when I was targeted with like the New York fries flavor. Like what am I supposed to do with that? That's not a story. <laughs> I'm going to lose a lot of readers or fans and followers. So instead, you know, the life jacket company comes up with life jacket awareness week or um, the bike wheel, the bike tire company comes up with bike to work day. These clever jump off campaigns that we can really say, that's the one I'm gonna double down on that. And that's my spring campaign and that's my fall campaign. I've always loved um, the way a few companies do this so, so well, and they roll it out on social brilliantly. And, you know, sometimes we'll catch a one-off video of it as a, you know, hey, you should watch this cool video that Heineken did, but rarely do we see all the pieces in play. And, and if it's done really well, it builds on itself and it generates more and more engagement as it goes. And, it, and, and the performance, of course, is there and it, it resonates and people can't wait for the next thing. Um, one of the WeWork videos that is campaign-ish, or at least it's timely, it's not tone deaf. And uh, the fact that they're still producing a lot of video and posting it to Facebook is also very cool and quite unique. Um, but this guy here, 
if I blow it up a little bit, <laughs> it's clever and it's emotionally driven. It's something that, you know, makes me smile. You don't even need the, the music on and it's very limited captions. It's like a beautiful post. So you get the idea. Um, but certainly it's playing into what's happening currently. And, uh, and they're doing a really good job of that. Another one, this is how I'm gonna sum this up, or wrap it up, I should say. Airbnb is one of the most brilliant campaign uh, creators in terms of digital content that I've ever seen. And they have had some really groundbreaking video ads and you know content types over the past. And they're not creating a lot of video content right now for their 16 million fans and followers. Um, but they are, and we can see that here, if I look at how, just how few and far between their videos are right now, uh, if I head down to all videos and I can just see sort of, you know, 42 weeks ago, 32 weeks ago. So that's interesting, but that's okay. Um, but then when I go to their homepage, so that makes me think, well, how much are they actually using Facebook content? Well, not a lot. They're posting to their feed, like few and far between. They must be finding engagement on their posts better in other places is my thought. And they're getting a lot of shares and comments on it. Awesome. They must be picking and choosing what they want to uh, advertise. And they're really doing a, a great job of responding here to whatever these replies are. And there may be something here to do with a bit of a contentious content. I'm guessing if they have 191 replies about something, this actually could be something that pushed the wrong buttons. But regardless, their content frequency on Facebook is down, which is really interesting to me. But check this. When I head into page transparency and I go and I see what ads they're running right now in their ad library, it is on fire. They're not slowing down with their promoted content. So remember the Unilever conversation. Just because they're choosing, not choosing to add something to their feed doesn't mean they're not running ads that look like news posts or news feed posts. I'm sorry, this is taking so long to, to load. So um, don't mistake any kind of lack of content or video content for a going dark. And also I think what that does to me is reiterate the fact that we don't need to be everywhere. If something's not working for you, you don't have to abandon it entirely and I wouldn't encourage you to just cancel your profile, but just show up once a month and then find what's working and go there. You know, one of my favorite kind of lines is just because Twitter was really, really great for you in, you know, 2009 to 2012, like it was for me, my, my people were there and I got a lot of engagement and now I find it to be a dumpster of negativity and I don't love it. Um, but that's not to say I'm going to hang on to it. I don't need to, I can go to the next place where my people are. I, it's, it's one of those things where you've got to continue to be nimble and shift and don't worry about starting from scratch. So we can see just how many ads these guys are running. Started November 20th, November 19th, November 18th, November 16th. Uh, no shortage of Airbnb content being placed in the newsfeed or elsewhere right now. And if I really wanted to dive in deep, I could see all the placements of, uh, of where these are landing and what audiences they're targeting, um, et cetera. So uh, with that, let's look at number two. We've talked about uh, how video is still very important. And now we're going to talk about the shift from public to private and why that matters. We've talked a bit about the consumer needing to be in control, myself and likely you as well, if you really think about it. I wanna know who's targeting me and why sometimes. I wanna know what list I'm on. I wanna be able to uh, hide that ad if I hate it or I keep seeing it, Pinterest. Or I want to be able to you know, unfollow someone that I'm not digging anymore. That's part of that control um, and that demand uh, because I have the choice and I can go find something else. The other thing though is that I want to have, it's not even a privacy thing, which it is for some people. They don't want to publicly post their comments, but they want to engage about a certain product or platform or whatever. For me, it's software. I want to ask questions, but I don't necessarily want to post it on a public, public page perhaps. So Facebook groups do this so, so well. And they can be totally gated where you have to request access, as I'm sure you've experienced, um, or they can be wide open. And uh, this is up to you. We're seeing a huge rise in other membership groups, like where we're building our memberships on Mighty Networks, um, because we can run so many different 
types of courses and memberships and paid and unpaid and private and everything in there. So I needed more features, but Facebook groups are fantastic because that's already where people are. You're not asking them to go engage with you in a private group over on a separate network when they're already on Facebook and Instagram a lot. Our friend Lucy Dunn does this really well and she has a, a an amazing company. She's a, a, tra a personal trainer. She's just a wellness coach and a recovering um, anorexic and all sorts of wonderful content that comes out of it. She's so real. She's got her app. She does her, you know, beautiful social content. And then she's also got her private members group where these women mostly are sharing, you know, really real and raw stuff. So of course it's a private group that you need to uh, request access to. And in some cases we see that someone's group will actually have more followers or fans, especially if it's open, than their page does. Uh, I'll show you one in a second. So we saw where in our private, in our, like in our profile, we have all of our groups lined up. And then a couple of examples here of some groups that I'm a part of. Uh, both of these actually are closed. One is a private group that's free and another one is part of a huge program that I was, I, that I paid for. Uh, utilizing their banner as prime real estate of, you know, just an opportunity to, to brand the group in a great way or to promote upcoming live calls, coaching calls, Q and A's, whatever it is that is, that is being offered to those people. Um, so really, really cool. And, uh, and of course, you know, you've probably got some examples yourself of, of places where you engage with groups more than, more than others. And I think the nicest groups are those that the, um, host or the company, um, or organization is an MIA. So you're stepping into the conversation and you're showing up and, and that's really nice to see, oh, there's the owner, there they are. They're being a little different than they would be on say their page, like Jen Olmstead is the owner here of Tonic. Uh, it's a website template company. And it's really neat to see her showing up personally, but that's a choice she has to make because and you open yourself a little bit, maybe a lot, but different conversation. Um, and then of course, you know, engaging in a way that encourages users to take ownership of those conversations and help you manage that group. That's the, the Shangri-La when we can get there. Enter <laughs> instant pot. I'm not a cook at all or chef. So this is like hilarious to me. It's just not my thing. I like to clean. Um, and so <laughs> the instant pot community, I can't even say it with a straight face. There's 2.8 million members for this free group. And it's so awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm not making fun. I'm just fascinated that this many people want to talk about their Instant Pots. But to be honest, if it was like a new laptop, I'd be the same. Um, so everything, like people asking for suggestions and recipes and ideas. It's so positive. It's incredible. So that's refreshing. Um, you know, like wow me with some wisdom and ideas. 841 comments. Like... Instant Pot is just laughing all the way to the bank or grinning at least because like talk about a way to get people continuously thinking about your product and thus wanting more. If I buy a blender and I never think about it again or a course and I don't complete it, my affinity towards that blender company or course maker or whatever it is, is probably lower than it could be because I didn't get to the finish line or I didn't actually use that thing. So I feel like it was a waste of money and I'm going to somehow overtly hold it against the company. If I can stay top of mind and encourage people to use it or come back for more or get more resources and support around it, remember, give in order to get, now we're laughing and I have a, an easy way if Instant Pot wants to step into this conversation and I imagine they have to do it very carefully as so as not to take over with ads um, but do it in a way that's you know maybe the people can show up the product developers the CEO the salespeople, the customer service reps that's who we want to hear from another example that I love of a group is the Saskatchewan Fishermen's Association it is not hosted by a brand it is these literally these these fishing guides that want to talk about it. And then when they invite or when, you know, local fishing guides or or, you know, fishing rod salesmen step in and talk about it, they show up as people, not as brands. And you understand why it's it's just a totally different feel. So this is quite hilarious. And to be honest, if we looked at let's just do it for the sake of doing it. If I look up Instapot. Uh, how many fans? I'm just curious. How many fans do they have as a page? I wonder. Um, we'll see there. 
goodness, doesn't even show up here. The community, the recipes, they have a lot of pages. I won't go down that rabbit hole, but I'm willing to bet that they don't have nearly 2.8 million fans on their page. Okay, so the point is that we want, um, and this is how much it's grown in the last six months too, by the way, I had this old shot and I laughed. That was from like March on the left and November on the right. So if we look at, um, you know, that kind of private experience, uh, just know that people want to have that. They want to feel like it's an exclusive piece of content or that they're engaging with you in a more one-to-one -one personal way. And, and groups can really do that on Facebook so, so well. And anyone can have a group. If you have a page, you can start a group and, uh, and you can brand it however you like, which is really neat. And then you can promote it through your page, connect it to your page, boost the content from the group. Uh, it has all sorts of very cool affiliated features. Next in this shift from public to private is the instant messaging and the direct messaging um, opportunity that we have in Facebook now. So Messenger as a formerly just a feature within Facebook is now so gigantic that it's considered its own app. It's got its own, you know, stock and uh, its own app. So some people just use the Facebook Messenger app. They never use Facebook or Pages or any of those other apps in the app store or on their phone. And um, I was saying to a lady today, I get more messages on Facebook Messenger now than I do in text, for better or for worse. And you know, it's dead easy to send someone a Facebook message. <laughs> Anyone can do it. And I can look you up and if I get your name and you're publicly listed on Facebook, I can pretty much send you a Facebook message. So, um, you know, it's, it's not something that is uh, going away. And if we're using it as companies, which most of us automatically have Messenger built into our pages, unless we turn it off, our consumers, prospects, customers, they want us to respond to them. And you can see the disparity there sometimes between what a company thinks is a reasonable response time and, and what a consumer, high maintenance consumer expects. That's not to scare you. That's to say that if you just reconcile that and see Messenger or Inbox as one of your marketing platforms or tactics, and why wouldn't you, um, that you can, you can understand that with, you know, someone assigned to the messenger or some proper autoresponders set up that happen every time you're away from your, your messenger from, you know, maybe you have two hours where your messenger is live and then the rest it's away messaging. That's okay. Every day, every weekday, whatever you want. But my team, my point to them is like, you guys, we're working so hard on acquisition and awareness and post content and promoted content and ad spends and new eyeballs and repeat eyeballs and getting them to our website. How crazy are we not to serve them the moment they get there with a question? And that goes for, you know, your website homepage or, or every page of your site that might have a little chat bot built into it or embedded in it, which is so important today. When I don't see a chat bot, I'm often frustrated because I'm like, great, I got to phone the helpline, send an email, I'm going to get a response from Romania in three days. It's going to be this disjointed back and forth. And all I want to do is ask for one of my past invoices or, you know, how I get the pro account or whatever it is. And if someone's there for me, nine times out of 10, I buy right then. So Messenger's the same. We've got it, you know, obviously it's on our Facebook page, but we certainly can embed it on our website if we want to, which is really cool. You can do that instead of getting a third party app. And let's just quickly look at where that might show up. So I'm gonna get out of, of uh, these guys for a moment and I'll go into, um, well, let me go back to Hilberg because they have a really nice one that if I land on their page, 79,000 people like this page, good for them. Right away, they've chosen to let their, if you can see this here, their messenger pop-up um, auto open. And that's pretty fascinating. Um, and then I can get started right away. So if I get started, they can see my public info and I can ask a question. Maybe I say, oh, look at that. I didn't even have to say a thing. I'm gonna show you where this lives. These are auto-generated FAQs. Shop now, view website, or learn more. Maybe I want to shop now. And it's going to take me somewhere that could be their Facebook. Oh, there it is. Neat. They're taking me to their Facebook shop. Unbelievable. Or if I want to view website or learn more, obviously I'm going to get those same types of responses. So talk about a dead easy way. Um, maybe I can say, where are your stores? Maybe they've got that loaded into one of their FAQs that's gonna have an auto response to it. 
it would be great if they did for the sake of their sanity, or it might be something that someone has to get back to me on. Now they're going to think I'm a dummy and they're going to say, uh, why don't you use Google Maps? Anyways, that was worth it. That experiment was totally worth it for you guys to see that. Um, hang on a minute. I lost this window. Let me just extend that. I got to keep it all in the frame. Um, okay, so um, if we look at our opportunities for automated messaging, instant messaging, we've got a few. First thing we're going to do is go to um, the pages settings, as I mentioned earlier. We're in the gray screen, we go up to settings, and we get the baseline starter point of starting a messenger conversation opportunity. So let's go there and just see where we would begin to get going um, on some of these uh, settings changes. So I'm in my page. I go back over to settings, which is the same place earlier we were trying to adjust uh, our page template, among other things. Um, and of course, this general menu here is really important for you to go through, uh, work your way down it. So before I head to advanced messaging, which is going to bump me to phase two, I'm going to just go into messaging. And this is where, if I look at this screen, I can do a few things here. The first one is going to be start that conversation with a greeting. So what that looks like in the actual app is um, on and then I can change this. So before they send my page a message, just like with Hilberg and Burke, my greeting appears in the chat window. Um, and it's going to say, hi, thanks for getting in touch with us on Messenger, or um, you know, thanks for visiting our page, whatever you want it to say. Please let us know if you have any questions. And I can customize that with any kind of personalization that you want. Um, they're gonna know, Facebook knows your name, so they can, you can add that in, or I could say, have you checked out our website, and then I can list that, or phone, email address, etc. So anything you want to start the conversation with or as a greeting, you can do it. If you're unsure of what it's gonna look like, because oftentimes we're like, well, what does that even mean? Where does that show up? Um, you can see what it looks like in your feed um, anytime. So if I want to see how that looks, I can go ahead and find that somewhere in here, <laughs> I promise you. And it's going to send you a note as to, uh, or a notification to go see it in your feed. Um, a couple other options here are um, adding it to our website. So that's where I mentioned that if nothing else, you don't have a, another type of third party live chat, WeChat, there's so many of them, chatbot, um, you can use Messenger and you can embed Messenger's uh, chat into your website, which is kind of nice. It's branded as Messenger, so you may not like that, but now you've got those messages showing up in your inbox. Don't believe me? Let's go see. If I go into um, my page and I see what it looks like from you know, a user perspective, actually, let me just go do a search. So if I say social school, and I want to see how things are looking and, and it's saying right now I'm, I'm interacting as me, but what if I want to view it as a visitor? I'm going to see it kind of as, let me just reduce this a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, I can go in and I can say, yep, yeah, I want to message somebody. And this has shrunk down again, but um, I asked the question, what are your hours? And oh dear, Hilberg must think I'm a real dummy. <laughs> um, that's so nice that they got back to me already with a link. Um, maybe it was automated. I'm going to hope so. Did you see that? They've sent me a, a reply already. That's really nice. Um, see? Affinity. I want to buy something from them now. So this is our out of office or our immediate response, right? Someone asks a question and we say, thanks for being in touch. We try to be as responsible as possible, get back to you as soon as we can. Maybe not the best reply and I could do instead some, um, you know, I, I suppose, actually, I just want to show you something. I want to say, okay, thanks. And I want you to see that now we're going to have a new message in our inbox. Oh, there's another one. Thanks for being in touch, Kelly. <laughs> oh, I'm really showing you this well. Um, so I've got some adjustments to do on here and all the more reason to be doing some testing. And to be fair, this is what it said this afternoon. And this is uh, what I've changed it to since then. I added a first name. So um, my point here is that uh, you've got to know what your autoresponders are doing and they can be really effective if done right. You just have to play with it a little bit. If I go back now into my inbox, I'm going to see that that messenger is showing up right here. Um, and what an easy way to manage all your messages in one place, right? Or just your Facebook messenger. So it's going to have uh, an appearance. 
So um, if we want to go a little bit deeper than just those initial kind of um, replies or, or settings, then I can head back into where I was settings and I can go into my messaging and I can even just scroll down here and see what other possibilities I have um, to set up automated responses is what they're asking me to do here. And if I set that up, it's going to bump me right to um, a more sophisticated place where I've got uh, the opportunity to create those FAQs. Um, and it lives in a very confusing spot right here automated responses. If you need to refer back to this page here or your slide deck, um, you're going to see it. So we get those initial messaging opportunities from settings on the page and then uh, the pop-up chat becomes part of that as Red Bloom Salon has here. But where do we go to customize these FAQs? Glad you asked. Inbox, automated responses. And now we've got all sorts of places that we can customize. So I head in here and I can um, you know, think about the things that I want to automate and Facebook is very good at helping me do that. And then when someone lands there and asks me something basic, uh, those responses come about. Uh, my away message is uh, basically going to be set so that anytime I'm not at, the, at my desk, the away message um, is on and I can adjust that schedule however I need to. Thank you for your message. We're catching our Z's right now. If I uh, change this time zone, or this um, timing, then it's going to be live. And maybe we're not catching our Z's at 11 a.m. So you've got to be careful with that one. But if you're only away in the evening, then then great. Uh, this is those FAQs. So this is where uh, Red Bloom Salon has it set up to say, um, right away we're going to ask, or we're, we're often asked, how much do your services cost? What services do you offer? And maybe where are you located? And they can give a generic answer for that. And then inevitably, the next step would be, did that help solve your question or solve your problem? If not, here's a few additional links for you. And uh, we will be in touch. So you've got lots of opportunities in here to kind of adjust those. Um, your contact info and location are two built-in um, FAQs that you're going to want to flesh out and then turn off or on. Maybe you have a job application received and, and if you're creating posts like that, you want to turn that one on. Maybe you've got appointments, um, all of those types of things. Then you can have timers set up for that as well. So... Before we head into paid strategy, I do just want to show you um, another thing. So you may have noticed on our page, especially when I was in that, that forward view, that we were able to see, um, we were able to see uh, appointment scheduling or someone could book an, uh, book an appointment with us. And um, we're going to do that same thing right from our uh, page. And we can go in and create appointments and manage the appointments from there. And it's, it's a cool option if that's something you're into. We've made it a prominent thing for us because our most frequently asked thing is, can I talk to you about one of your courses? Can I just speak to an admission specialist? Absolutely. So we set up our appointments calendar um, and then we add that button and we don't have to have some kind of third party scheduling tool in play. And of course, we can adjust our appointment settings to say, um, this is when we're available, this is when we're not. And all we've had to do is create one appointment type. So we've got our appointment times, we can sync it to a calendar if we want. And then what's our services list for those appointments? I mean, you might be a car dealer who's changing tires or windshields, um, or a mechanic, I should say. You might be uh, just accepting consultations. Or for us, we just have a 15 minute programs inquiry call and it's really easy for people to book. And um, you know, we get the notifications and all of, they get the auto replies and it's a really handy way to coordinate uh, anything, any kind of appointment. All right, you guys, last piece here. So we talked earlier about, of course, the post targeting and retargeting has been kind of a theme here, but we talked about some of those posts that we've boosted and how they've performed. and in our audience mapping and ad campaign courses, we go deeper into that, of course, as I've said, which is um, you know creating the audiences in advance before you go boost a post. So important, otherwise you're just bleeding money to not a targeted audience. It's that spray and pray. I know that we've got a lot of audiences to choose from, so if I go boost a post, I can choose right away from one of my 46 pre-created audiences and feel really good about who's getting what post. 
this is an example of uh, a different post that was not the one I mentioned where you're applying for a scholarship. It was the one up above with 18,000 um, uh, reach. And for $100, as you can see, over the course of uh, seven days, I believe it was, we boosted this post to a specific audience. I chose to boost it just to women, which is why you can see in the results that it was 100% women. Um, and the performance was decent. Sorry, it was over four days, 100 over four days. So I just want to paint a picture here just to say, okay, well, yes, that's a lot of money for one boosted post. However, it was a significant message. It had a video with a caption. It was something that we really wanted to promote and drive people to to register that led to an enormous increase in our subscribers. In our, um, we did, we ran a four week video series, which led to a bunch of people purchasing another program after the fact. Um, so it was all part of a, a, a kind of strategic strategy that started with a promoted post. And it was certainly worth $100 when I think about the long term, you know, play. Um, but if I just look at the results of that post too, the fact that we had 18,000 people reach, that's how many people were served up the promoted post or the, the ad, the promotion, and then almost 2000 post engagements of whatever type that looked like. But in this case, through plays to have 1900 people watch that video to the end, um, is significant or to whatever I determined my through play to be, which might be 50%. In this case, we have our through plays set to be 90% of the video. So, um, that is significant to me because to pay five cents per through play, which I know to then, if I was looking at the conversion of that or a different metric that wasn't through plays and instead it was clicks or, you know, clicks to website, not just clicks on the post, then again, it's really money well spent. So, um, I would encourage you to kind of think about this strategy and, and working some, some pay to play into your campaigns and your posts. It, you know, it, it never ceases to amaze me. Certainly when I was in PR, how many people would say, uh, well, for one, I just want to be on Oprah. I'm really dating myself now, but also I really want to be on breakfast television, or I really would love to be on the six o'clock news. And, you know, so many of these kind of like legacy traditional media outlets, or even today, like blogger platforms or Instagram feeds. And the cost is astronomical in a lot of ways when you think about the return or the actual reach. If you were to look at morning television, how many people are actually watching in a city of over a million people? Oftentimes the Nielsen ratings will show that there's like an average audience of 7,000 people or less. And how many of those people are actually engaging, watching and doing something with that content? Cause you can't click on a morning news segment. Um, so when we look at it in that regard, you know, how much we want to spend on a PR company or a paid um, placement on another person's Instagram feed. When, if we just strategically boost our own content that we know we've created with a lot of thought and strategy and whatever, um, maybe skill, um, a great art imagery, copywriting, we can go so, so far and it's, uh, it costs pennies comparatively. So I just look at that number of 16,000 people reach for a hundred dollars. And I would do that all day long, every day, especially knowing that it's targeting specific people and that it's actionable content with all sorts of calls to action within it. Watch this, sign up here, comment there, like that, share that fan, become our fan or follower. Like that lives on. It's not a singular ad on the radio that will never be engaged with again. Another type of really interesting kind of paid strategy that is all about engagement are what we can do with Facebook Messenger ads. I've told you how many people are using Messenger exclusively or as part of their Facebook suite um, and direct messaging in particular. So many of us hanging out in our Messenger and that promoted content can sneak in there really easily. The first time I saw a Messenger ad, I literally hollered because it was a local grocery delivery company that was showing up in Facebook Messenger as an ad placement and I was blown away. It was a new thing, it was exciting and I couldn't get over the fact that it wasn't like McDonald's or I don't know, Airbnb or some giant multinational. It was a local grocery company and they were targeting appropriately and they were hitting me in the inbox and it didn't feel like promoted content. It felt like they were messaging like me, like they were their friend, my friend, but I could see it was promoted, but I didn't mind. And from there, like a lot of people would have reason to do, like an, an auto dealer or again, someone who's taking appointments or um, trying to get people along the garden path, 
you can set up auto responses and actions to take in your Facebook Messenger ad campaign where if I click send message or book a test drive or whatever you choose that call to action to be, then I'm taken further into, example, a booking test drive. You know, it can be as simple as literally, would you like, hey Kelly, here's the new expanded Toyota RAV4, new edition, like, did you know our seats are bigger or something? But it'd be even better if they knew my pain point, which is like, wish I had a third row. Hey Kelly, have you seen our third row? Or somehow maybe I've clicked on that in the past or whatever it is. They know my prototype of like mom who wants a third row in her lame SUV and I don't want to drive a minivan. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm invisible enough. And then they serve me up something that speaks my language. It's not just product forward. It's like, wouldn't it be nice to not have to or whatever. And then I'm like, yes, amen, you get me. I click on it, you know, hey, would you like to book a test drive or would you like to come see us? Yes. When, does Saturday work? Yes. 9 a.m. Great. See you then. Here's your booking link. I didn't have to leave the platform. I didn't have to call anyone. I didn't have to go research on the website. Meet, meet me where I am and get me there faster. And then I've met my goals quicker. And in some cases, I didn't even know I needed it. And holy smokes, that just happened. Thank you. Amen. Um, and, and you're meeting your goals faster too as the marketer or business owner, obviously. So, so many great opportunities. I know this seems overwhelming and like, okay, but how would I go about building that? I mean, I will say it one more time. We have a course for that. That's ad campaigns and, you know, all of our digital marketing certificate courses are a hundred percent about backend um, results, but you can familiarize yourself with the Facebook ad campaigns and business manager, business suite, and quickly see that it's not as hard as it sounds. If you can create a boosted post, you can create an ad campaign. And, um, you know, one audience that you build, you can build on that and suddenly have 46 like we do or four. That's even better because you know exactly who's in them and you can clean them up and rebuild them every quarter. Um, and then you just experiment and everything in Facebook and Instagram is uh, and any platform these days is about time, getting familiarized with it, getting comfortable and then, you know, optimizing and improving as you go. But the worst thing you can do is dive in once, feel overwhelmed and then never return, I, I promise you. Okay, a few final exercises for you that relate to what we've talked about in module four here. If you can, a community building brainstorm, and this doesn't have to be a Facebook group, but is there a way that you can engage your people, existing or prospective, um, in a more kind of intimate or uh, exclusive way? You know, what could you potentially do that more deeply connects with people um, and what are they seeking you know what it is that that they're missing from you currently or that they're missing in their lives that you know to be a pain point or a desire or a surface level fear or a deep-seated one and uh, and then think of ways that you can kind of roundabout deliver that to them um, what about a forum for people to find each other or you know non-branded posts and community management from insiders and industry experts what would that look like um, you know, how could you host conversations from public social feeds in a private or gated environment and you would do this because why? Really want you to kind of think through some of these things if you can and then prioritize them. Is there one that's really standing out as an opportunity for you? And again, it doesn't have to live in a private separate group if you're not ready for that or a, a third party network. It can just be a new piece of content or a content type that you start to create and then maybe you target it to that specific group of people that have bought from you in the past or were on your website last week or are, you know, that millennial age group or whatever it is. That post content will be served to them and nobody else. Yes, it'll show up in your newsfeed if you choose it to, or if it's a promoted post, not an ad, like Airbnb is doing, uh, but you can obviously make sure that it's seen by the people you want to see it. Next. You know, we talked about campaigns and how those jump off themes can be really helpful for a number of reasons. I would love it if you could think of, you don't have to do all 12 months, but can you think of at least four that have a certain theme to them? And the way that we do this in all of our content writing clubs and, and courses is to come up with both a sales focus for each month if we can, or each quarter if that's better for you, as well as a marketing focus. Oftentimes they're hand in hand, but sometimes not because that sales focus for, you know, February might be your bundle package spring cleanup cleaning session. Um, 
and your marketing plan or your marketing of that has already happened or that was in March, April, May or something like that. It may not always co correspond. So just thinking about those kind of jump off points or significant events, launches, sales efforts, because as we know, more than ever, sales and marketing go hand in hand. You cannot have your sales department not talking or, you know, in isolation from your marketing team. They are one and the same and marketing drives sales like never before and vice versa. We learn from sales and we incorporate it into our marketing efforts. It's not a silo. So thinking about how to generate revenue from our marketing efforts, because now we can, and we can prove every single dollar that every single post generated and every website visit, and we can track it back and that's a whole other course, but it's very possible. And you can show up now to your boss or to yourself and say, my social media efforts drove X amount of sales and uh, here's the path to how it happened. Finally, the key messages. This is so important. This isn't just for, you know, the corporate playbook or communications plan. So many organizations, big and small, do not know their five to 10 most important messages that people need to know about them. And they can be written in point form. These don't have to be polished external statements, but they need to be the like rally cry of your brand and your business. Like people need to know that we're this and we do this and we're the best at that and we're gonna transform them in this way and here's why they should buy from us and here's what we do differently and all these questions, um, the leading questions. So you've got lots of examples down there um, that hopefully can serve as guideposts for you and your team if you have one or just be great content uh, starters. They could even be monthly themes if you wanted to like cycle through them for the year or blog post starters, but you've got to bring these out. So many of us, you know, just kind of don't see them as important or that we bury them in our, in our efforts and, and it no longer becomes, you know, part of our mission to make sure that people know straight up what we do, who it's for and why they should buy from us. Consumers are dummies. We, I don't know your brand. I don't know your language. Don't speak to me in technical jargon. And if you confuse me, you lose me. So work these kind of key messages into your content at all costs. And with that, I bring you to the end. Um, I hope that that was helpful and I really hope to see you in another course um, and that your Facebook game is going to improve dramatically and that you're excited about finding certain pieces of the platform and running with them. If there's one thing we know, the interfaces, the links, the drop down menus, the opportunities will change, but don't let that scare you. Just navigate it, figure it out, use the search tool if you need to, to find whatever it is you're looking for. You've got a lay of the land, the words don't change. Insights, in, like, inbox, posts, newsfeed, ads, audiences, those all remain the same. And they do cool things and it will continue to grow. So I encourage you to get to know it really well and then continue to build on it. And uh, yeah, let us know how it goes. Thank you so much. See you hopefully in the next course.